September and happy Labor Day. I'm excited that you are here today in the Marketing Club with me, your host, Favor Obasi K. You know I'm rhyming, okay? So let's get this show started, okay? I'm excited for you to be here with me to learn about marketing research. Marketing research is one of those exciting things that we love to do. And today, I wanted to just, you know, go a little bit, you know, further into understanding and giving you some insights on how billboard advertising works, you know, what to do with advertising. Welcome to Clubhouse, LaKendra. Thanks for joining. You know, you have things that are going to help your business grow, but you also have to think about the ability to find ways of expanding your business, expanding your truth, expanding your culture, expanding your mindset, right? So there's so many things that we we'll have to think about as a business when we're thinking of digital billboard advertising. You know, we don't really think about advertising most times, but you know, we have to ask ourselves, do we even do these things? You know, do we have time to do these things? You know, do we even know what digital billboard advertising is? Are there options? You know, what are the options? And are they good options too? Because I've heard of different platforms where you can, you know, do advertising on billboards. But the real question is, is anybody clicking? Are they seeing your billboard? Is it is it working for you? Are you just spending money? Because sometimes we we ask ourselves, how much does it cost, you know, to have a billboard, to build one, to, you know, all these things are really big questions that we keep asking. But the real question we're trying to find out is, can we reach the person that's actually looking for us? Can we build that connection? You know, and we have to ask ourselves these questions, right? There are over a million, according to blindspot.com or cblindspot.com, that's their domain, right? Just for them alone, right? Just for them alone, just in terms of like the full term, welcome Rob, right? There are about over a million digital billboards in, they said about 50 countries, right? Plus countries. And, and it's funny that they said 50 plus and then at the same time, they said that's that's over a million digital billboards in 50 plus countries. And then in the U.S., in all 50 states, they have about 500,000 billboards. Now, how if you think about a billboard, right, most times the, the when you have a billboard and you are doing this for research, you have to think about one specific thing. If this one thing is missed in your planning, if in your strategy, in your reporting, then the billboard is not going to be a good thing for you. This is the one thing you have to think about, the time. The time. The time, the hours that you're actually showing, you're displaying. If you're, if it's between 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock and you, you're a restaurant company and you're selling food, that's a perfect time for you to do that because people are driving, trying to figure out what food to eat or where to go to have lunch for 30 minutes or an hour. And then you have a billboard talking about those things. So that's one example. And you have to also do it within the areas. You have to test campaigns on multiple screens. Like somebody might like it on a small screen. Somebody might like it on a wide screen. Someone might not like it on a screen, right? So you have to think about where people are working from. Another thing you have to consider when you're also doing, you know, ads, when you look at digital billboards is positioning right? Positioning, positioning, positioning. Because when you're positioning, you're thinking about zip codes. If I'm going to put my article or my ad or my business somewhere, I need to make sure I can check the competition. I can see who's running an ad where, what time, you know, what's going on there. Are those things that we need? Are those things that we need to do? Are we even putting ourselves out there? Right. And sometimes you think that billboards are not effective, but I've seen them to be effective, but it also depends on the ones that you're using. Right. Because there are different types of 
websites like this, cblindspot.com. You know, there's another website called blipbillboards.com. Those are good ones as well. Those are self-service. You know, you can use those. There's some that we use with our clients, which I would not disclose here, but those are the ones that we, there's one specifically that we use that's, that's international and we can get you on like the airport, get you in grocery stores, get you like in really good places that you don't have to be on the road because people think about digital billboards and they think they go straight to the road, they go straight to the highway, they go straight to the, the street next door. But digital billboard starts from your digital device, right? So if I can be pumping gas in a zip code that I know they love to read books, then I'm going to be talking about my book in that zip code and actually advertising as a 30 second clip. If I know it takes, if it takes me, I don't know if you've ever done this before, right? If you've ever timed yourself, you know, pumping gas, for example, if you're pumping like $50 gas or $20 gas or however much gas you're putting in, time yourself and see how long that takes then you can use that time to now know, okay, if it's going to take somebody a minute to fill up the tank or two minutes, then I can spend 30 seconds, 15 seconds with them. Hey, click, you know, hey, you there, turn around. You know, it's me. I want to talk to you. You know, that kind of expression that makes someone feel like, wow, let me actually listen because you caught my attention, not because I'm just hearing sound in the background. I'm not just hearing music in the background. You know, there has to be an intention for those things. So, that's that's some of the things that we're able to do to make you really think about your business and think about the value. There's something I also want to just cut across because I know sometimes we ask ourselves billboards, how much it costs, you know, do we need to do these things? I really think it's time to think about doing them because imagine going and looking and not seeing advertisements. You'd be like, something is wrong with this street because you're so used to seeing billboards, lights, you know, flashy stuff, color, you know, pixels, you're, you're seeing those things, right? Motion graphics. And then imagine your own there. Someone will say, oh yeah, I'm only there for eight seconds. But imagine eight seconds times the number of days you're there on at the specific time you're supposed to be there. Because if somebody is there at 10 o'clock, somebody else is there at 11 o'clock, somebody else is there at 6 p.m., the other person is there at maybe 9 p.m., the people that show up at those times are different. They have different mindsets. So we have to think about that. Before I go into some details about, you know, some statistics about this, I wanted to welcome you, Soda, to the room. How are you? And happy Labor Day. Hello. Oh, I'm so excited to be in one of your rooms. Um, it, it's It's been a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Have you ever thought about digital billboards? Um, not really because I, I just never look at them unless they're like really funny or profound and I take a picture of it and maybe share it on social media, but I just, I, I like billboards. They just like gloss through my brain, I guess. But I don't know, maybe, I guess not everyone is like me. So I, I'm interested to hear statistics. Yeah, you know, billboards for me, like I see them and, you know, you just see them, you ignore them and you go because it's not really like focusing on you. But if you ever saw a, a billboard that actually made sense to you, you'd remember that billboard because of how it looks. And for me, if I was to do a billboard, I would do a billboard like with a yellow, you know, yellow background, for example, or white background. Because you think about the sun, you know, the, the sun is hitting the ground, it's hitting the surface. You have to think about all those things. Like, have you ever thought about that soda? Do you look at the colors? Do you look for the letters, the font? Yes, I am very much into colors. So, yes. How do you process it? Like, when do you know when to look away, when to look at the detail i guess like if if something makes like if i see a color palette that makes me feel a certain way if i like that or it's like unique or something that's related to how i want to feel or am feeling like i will definitely remember that more than you know because a lot of places use the like a very similar um style and after a while you get so desensitized and your brain doesn't even 
like process it like what I was saying but sometimes I'll see something that just like stands out and lots of times the color has to do with it yeah I agree you know when you see those things it, it really gives you like a a different thing like if you making music if you're making movies if you are you know selling insurance you know those kind of things you always see them on the road you say hey somebody drop this new album out or new movie or check this out or exit here to go to bucky's or go to uh kroger or you know you, you're driving and you're looking for the nearest gas station you're going to look for a billboard right it may not be digital but it's a billboard it has something on it. It has some type of information. From what I got to see here, according to Formedo, that Formedco, they're called Formedco Digital. I'll actually put the link in the chat so you guys can do your research too. I like to just talk about these topics. I know it's not, a lot of people don't talk about this, but I said, let me bring this in. So if you look at this in the American landscape from what they said, Billboards capture attention and the imagination of drivers, right? And as commuters spend almost 300 hours in their car each year. So think about that. Every year you spend 300 hours in your car. And 71% of them consciously look at the outdoor advertising while driving. Billboards give advertisers a powerful tool to reach and engage a captive audience in an impactful way. With advancements in technology, and evergreen demand for digital billboards, the decision is to own a billboard. So people want to own billboards. So this is like talking about how much it costs. Are they profitable? Of course, you have to think about that. So let's say you're doing a medium to small to medium sized billboard. It can cost you about $300 to $2,000 a month. Now, why am I giving you these numbers? So that if you want to take, I'll, I'm going to flip it this way. If you were to spend between 300 to 2000 a month on just uh, having an actual billboard, that's fine. But I would take that same budget and I would run a budget of within that same, you know, let's say it's 300, let's look at the lower percentile. If we look at 300 and I say, okay, $300, that's $10 a day. So for the next 30 days, I will run an ad within these districts, within these zip codes. And because I've done my audience research, because I'm not just gonna run an ad in a random place, I'll know that, okay, there are commercial, you know, buildings here, there are residential buildings here. These are things that can actually show that people live around these places. So I can use that to understand that, okay, there's a Walgreens, there's a mall, movie spot so it tells me what people like people like movies people like to go to the park people like you know cycling they like to go to you know different areas that lets me know the affinity it helps me to know the social proof that when i run ads there i would run ads on bi digital billboards and also include qr codes especially if it's close range because when you have a qr code that's when you can also start adding value because sometimes people say how are you going to know if it came from this place or from that place you can use utm parameters to put them into your keys you can put them through a lot of you know digital billboards that have qr codes that you can scan and that will lead them to where they can sign up you know to your newsletter sign up to your community list that way you're getting a cold traffic lead you know that's that's literally turning into your space, you know, on a constant basis. So I think if you think about putting money to that and saying, okay, I know that my, my, you know, my clientele are business owners, they don't have time in the day to be outside. So anywhere between 5 a.m. and 9 a.m., I'll be running, you know, a $10 budget campaign. And then anywhere between, let's say, uh, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., I'm running ads again, so that's peak seasons. So instead of me running ads all day, every day, and wasting $10, I can split those $10 into two fives and then use 84 cents, three cents, you know, just see how I'm just testing for 30 days and see out of those times, morning or evening, which one did better. Then when I now gather my QR codes, my zip codes, you know, my area codes, I'm able to know which areas people were connecting, then I can do some digital advertising you know, and their social media, you know, go on the back end, make sure that they can actually see it. Cause it's one thing to do digital billboards. 
and just show up and stay there. But it's also great if you actually have digital billboards because it's digital media. So if you have a digital billboard, you should at least have a digital advertising going on. So let's say you have 500, you put 300 to the billboards, you put 200 to ads on, on Meta or, or TikTok, wherever you your people are. When you do that, you're now gathering data. You're gathering data from the QR code signups. You're gathering data from the analytics that you're getting. You're gathering data from your website traffic. You're gathering data from all these platforms and then people are getting to see you. So when you now do like zip code advertising and you know, okay, this billboard is located on this street, this street is within this zip code, then I know that these type of cars or these type of people are gonna drive through these type of roads. So it makes it easier for you to predict than just to second guess it. Have you thought about that soda? Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's a really good point. Like I, I'll notice that the kind of billboards I see you know, when you're stuck in traffic are very different than if you're like by a shopping, like a high end shopping mall or something like that. You know, like a lot of the the ones with um, like when you're driving, I see a lot of like the ones that I, I do remember, I guess, are like, have you been in an accident call? You know, because, you know, all those people that are on. The freeway or whatever like they have some sort of like at least the person driving they have a car you know so it relates to them so yeah that's a good point yeah definitely it has it has so much to do with it um black sea says appreciate the information and the points of perspective definitely helping to better position these individual boards with ads yes Yes, 100%. You're, you're right on this black and also soda. You know, when you're using advertisements to, to talk to people, if I show you this soap, you might not buy this soap because it's the least of your concerns right now. But if I keep showing up with this soap to a point where you actually start seeing the soap in your dream and you start actually thinking about the soap because now everywhere you go, you always see somebody talking about it or you go online and you start seeing those type of soaps, then it starts to become that psychological reframing. So you have to think about, you know, your, your value online when you show up with content that gives you consistency and value, you know, just by showing up online is a good way for you to even show that you actually have connections because if somebody is going to see you for the first time on a digital billboard, they don't know you. They don't know your brand. They may know your brand. You might just see, let's say, red Coca-Cola on it, and that's it, right? And you'd be like, okay, I know what that is. You don't have to say in finding happiness. You know, somebody drinking a Coke bottle, and then you see they're sharing happiness, right? It, literally, that's all it's saying. It's not telling you buy a Coca-Cola, go to your nearest supply store. It's not. It's just telling you share happiness. So what has that done? It's brought a sentimental value to your day, right? So that means the brand has actually added value to your day. So instead of saying, hey, listen to my song or buy this house or download this copy, I would say, are you feeling lonely? <laughs> Are you feeling happy? You know, listen here. Or, you know, is this you? You know, or you put something that's going to give you that, you know, perspective of, you know, giving you those things as well. Because when people can connect with those feelings through color, through style, through all those looks, it feels better. Like, it feels like, oh, wow, okay, I actually want to connect. If you go to a mall and you see Gucci, Louis Vuitton, you see Prada, you see all those things, the first thing you read is the logo. And then when you're reading the logo, you can you can see the font. That font is going to tell you what kind of experience you're about to get into. Is it luxury? Is it fun? Is it sophisticated? You know, that's going to tell you those things too. And the color is also going to bring that emotion. So if you're doing the same thing on a billboard, what are, what are the colors that you're using to spark that? Are you going to use a white background, a yellow background? You know, you're going to use a, a dark background because people are driving. So how are you going to see? McDonald's is great for this yellow. It's bright. You can see it. You can read it. Boom. So imagine doing something like that. You have like a whole yellow background and then white text, or you have, you know, white background, yellow text. You can flip it and see which one works best. And then in 30 days, you've spent $300, but in return, now you know exactly who your top audience is. 
you know, who, who they, they listen to, you know what they like. And then eventually you can now retarget those same people that have opted in and then do something called a lookalike audience or an actor like audience. So you've gathered a thousand people. Now you want to get a million people. So you now expand that to the power and then you can compound that interest by now adding, adding more context to that. So before you know it, you're meeting people who really want to hear from you. They actually want to work with you. They actually want to enjoy your product. Because when you go on a digital billboard, you're going to advertise a product. You're not going to advertise your day or you're not advertising, oh, this is us, this is our business. You're advertising a product. It's something that if they read, they're going to be like, okay, I want that. A product could be a movie ticket. It could be a cause. It could be shoelaces. It could be, you know, flowers. It could be anything, you know, but that research that they're getting back is so important because when people start seeing that and you start basing it in different places, then you get to see, okay, this works. So let's say I have five, let's say I have 10 cities in my top 10 list. I'll choose the top five and I'll also choose the bottom five. And then I'll choose the, the top most visited or most foot traffic or most driven, you know, streets that has, you know, the closest response to the, the billboard. And then I will pick the top 10 and then run ads on them. Within a seven to 14 day window, I'll see which one out of the top five and the bottom five did well. I'll take the, you know, the top two of the first and the top two of the, of the second, and then bring those together and see, okay, which ones do better again for another seven to 14 days. So you have 14 times two, that's 28 days. So in 28 days, you figured out from 10 to four. And now in the next month, you're going to spend that same budget again. You're going to be pumping all your advertising spend on those top two or top three, depending on the, how you want to do it or the, just top one. So when you now do that, you've been able to trim the fat, you know where your top audience is, your top responding audience, and then you now go back to that city and then run a digital billboard ad there. So in the beginning, you were just tapping into different states, different cities, getting to see what's going on, who likes me here, or who likes what we build, do people need what we have? And then eventually they tap in. When they tap in, they connect. When they connect, they respond. So that response becomes something that happens over and over again. So responsively, if I can say that word, people now start giving you contacts, information, start calling, start inquiring, start learning from you. They start asking you questions. You know, those are things that they start to build over time. So you're creating an experience for someone to actually connect with you. Because if I'm going to spend $300 to $2,000 on just getting a billboard, and then I'm somebody is going to, and then a larger billboards are between like $1,500 to $3,000, a month, right? And it takes about four to eight weeks, you know, for a billboard to be up. And then to own one, yeah, it could cost between 1500 to 30,000 a month, you know? So you start hearing all these numbers, you're like, okay, it starts getting more and more like, like, like crazy. And you start wondering, okay, how am I gonna run a billboard ad that is simple, it's affordable, it actually makes sense, it actually works. There's a platform that we use that we we do. It's such a great platform and it allows us to connect with, I'm looking at it right now, billboards, train stations and subways, bus shelters, you know, when people are waiting for the bus as well, especially in areas that are metropolitan. So that's good for foot traffic as well. So even instead of just having, thinking about people who are driving, people who are walking, because the people who are walking, they have their phones with them. And if they have their phones with them, it means they can scan the link or scan the QR code. So these are opportunities you don't want to just miss out on because these are things that people can actually pay attention to and then if you're in New York, and you're putting it there in the bus shelter, the digital billboard, boom, there you go. Retail and shopping in the mall. When people go to the mall, those little screens you see on the TV, you walk past them. Imagine having a really nice ad there and somebody's lifting their phone to scan it. That's because they actually enjoy what they're looking at. So your ad, the, the reason why maybe your ad is not converting is because maybe it's boring or people can read it or it's not colorful 
or it's just not striking or you don't have the right words or you're not saying the right thing. Like it could be a lot of things. So the right thing to do is to test, but how are you going to know if you don't test, right? Fuel stations, gas stations, gyms, medical centers, office towers, and also street furniture. Anywhere in the world, Australia, if you want to go to anywhere in the world, it's it's a really amazing thing to do. And very soon I'm going to be doing, uh, actually, Soda, let me tell you this. And also for those who are here, Black Kareem, Derek, Bright, Naomi, thanks for being here. I'm planning to start doing SEO weekly workshops. So it's going to kick off this month. So I'll give you guys more insight on that. And then I'll get you guys to do your pre-orders as well. But I'm going to be doing a lot of SEO workshops, things to do with like running Pinterest ads, setting them up, how to run a digital business ad like this, like a digital billboard, how to set it up, how to run it. You know, you get into a workshop and have access to that information. We'll do it together. Like we look at the whole map. I'm literally looking at the whole map right now. And you can choose anywhere in the world to run an ad so that when you start connecting with people in Brazil, in Chile, in India, in Russia, in Japan, and you know, South Africa, wherever you go, you can easily connect with these people as well. So yeah, so I'm working to get that, that show started. I have a question. So um, you were talking about like doing the research um, to find where is the best place for your ads, let's say, um, you're a musician. How would you, and you want to promote like a new album or something like that, like how, how would you know, would you just look at your demographics that you already have on social media and see how it relates to the demographics of the place? Also, I do like what um, Black said in the comments. Yeah, that was a good comment to Black Maid as well. You know, it's it's good that we're talking about this because we have to look at the big picture. For me, because I'm also in the music industry, entertainment business-wise too. Wow, Apple Music for Artists have introduced Radio Spin. So what I would do, I'm going into my artist profile right now, Flav Beats. All right, so wow, so I've had some Radio Spins. It says that I've had... It's see where your music is being played in over 40,000 radio stations worldwide. So yeah, my music is being played on radio spins. I didn't even know about that. I'm looking at it right now. Shazam's as well as like 7.5K Shazam's average for daily listener. So I have my list here. So I'll go to my analytics. Wow, I can even see the songs that they're spinning. Wow, look at that. So I that allows me to know, okay, these are the songs that people are liking. I'm actually giving you real-time information now. I'm looking at this for the first time in a long time. So there's a song that's called Talk the Talk that I did. And let me actually... Do you want me to play this song for you <laughs> so you can hear it, by the way? Okay, if you want me to play it. All right, so we're going to do something different today. I didn't plan to do this, but because you asked the question... I will make sure that we can do it. I'll, let me see if this can work. Um, let me go to Apple Music and I'll type the name of the song. And if you guys want to hear the song, I'm going to put the link in the chat. so you guys, And I, it's so funny. I was actually listening to this song last night because I don't listen to my own music. It's funny, like artists don't listen to their own music, but there's sometimes you want to listen to your music and just kind of hear what you've been doing because I'm working on um, doing music for next year. It's going to be 20 years making music, uh, just recording music, you know, from 05. Next year will be 20 years. So thank you, Black Sea. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. So I have the link there. And that's a song that, that's getting a lot of attention. It's called Talk the Talk. And I did this song when? In 2018. April 20th, 2018. Right? And I'm going to play the song for you. I'm just going to put it on here and then let me see. And then as I'm, before I say this, I just want to give you the stats. So I'm going to do the stats and say, so, okay, in the United States, let's see which states in the United States have been listening. Cause I'm getting radio spins, right? So I want to know, okay, where are these radio spins coming from? Boom. All right. I got my top five, Atlanta, Houston, New York city, Dallas, and Seattle. And I know in Seattle, Seattle right now is a top 
most visited destination in the U.S. for Labor Day weekend, from from what I saw online. I think um, the name is Boardroom. That's the name of the Instagram account. So I follow those financial, real estate, you know, business entrepreneurship rooms. Um, not rooms, but pages. You know, Instagram pages. It would be so cool if Instagram actually creates, you know. Um, social audio and you can, I don't know, that just came to my mind right now. It was a quick, it was a quick thought and a quick drop. <laughs> so I'm thinking about the long-term effect of this and yeah, Black Sea, yeah, I, I, you're in music too. Okay. I definitely would love to connect with you because I make beats, you know, and that's been my whole thing now. Like I even told a, um, a client today, I'm like, I'm going to make some beats today because we sell exclusive license beats, non-exclusive buyout licenses. And I'm like, today's a holiday, so let me not just sit back and do SEO. Let me just connect. So I'm about to play the song. Welcome, Black. Welcome to this space. I'll play it. I'm not going to play the full song. I'll just play a minute of it. And then we're going to rock out from there. So I want to change my audio quality music. And then if you guys can hear the music when I play, just give me a thumbs up. If you can't hear it, give me a thumbs down. Here we go. <clears throat> Go. Okay. Yeah. It's flame beat. It's flame beat. I'm in the bad way. I'm in the bad way. You talking out of your head. I'm talking airplanes. I talk to God in a second. Instead of talking to the river. I talk to God in a second. Instead of looking at the bar. So when you hear this, so I'm just playing it for you, right? Because Soda, you brought this up. <laughs> so you can hear the song. I put it in the chat. This song, I made this in 2018. 2018, so that's a long time ago. So I'm listening to this and just cringing because it's been a while. So Atlanta, Houston, New York City, Dallas, and Seattle are listening to my music. There are about how many countries? 79 countries that are listening to my music on Apple Music from what I see. But in the United States, the top five are those five cities. So I would go to those five cities and then look for the billboards in those cities and then advertise my music and say, hey, this is the album cover. Listen to Flav Beats on Apple, on Spotify, right? I'm not telling you listen to track five or go to this website. Like, I'm just telling you straight up, go where you already go to. And then when you find the music there, you can find the website, you can Google, you can now start surfing, right? So that's why they call it surfing the web, you know? So that's how you start. You start from one point and you end up at another point, like a rabbit hole. So that's how I would do it. And that's how I would get to those positions. Does that help, Soda? Yeah. Yes, it does. Thank you. You're welcome. I gotta switch this audio quality back. Oh, this was good. Black, we'd love to hear from you. Welcome, America Super Mom. Black, what's up? Hey, blessings, blessings. Appreciate letting me in the group, you know, in the chat. I, I respect everything that, that I'm hearing. Honestly, it's like once once I saw digital billboards, I was like, yeah, this is what I need to tap into. I've been listening to a couple of the shows, so I'm just glad to, you know, to chime in right now. But I appreciate that. 
Appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, there's so much with digital billboards that you can do. I'll be running a workshop on how to set it up, how to get it going, how it actually works, how much to spend, how much to budget, where to go, do your research. And then when you go on social media, it, you're singing the same song. You know, it's across the same board. So yeah, we'll definitely talk about that. We'll be, I'll be bringing that from next week. So just stay tuned. I'm, I usually do daily rooms here on Clubhouse. It's just that today's a holiday, so I didn't want to do it too early because people are not here either. So I wanted to just make sure that we keep it light, you know, as well for a little bit. But that that was a really good point. So I appreciate that. America's Supermom, welcome to the room. How are you? I am good. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that I came in. That that was a good song. I'm going to have to share it with uh, my son. He does music and I have a daughter who does as well. But that's definitely kind of like his style. But... um and I hate that I came in late, but can you explain the digital billboard concept? Because I'm, I'm not familiar with that. Okay. So today's room, I wanted to just elaborate on how you can identify your audience using billboards for advertising your product. Majorly, that's what people use billboards for. And if you're using it for product awareness, product marketing, or just audience building or audience targeting, then the greatest place to do it within a community is doing it outside. Because you can be everywhere at the same time, but your platform, your digital presence could be felt. So if you have a local business and you serve this county or this state or the city, then that could also be beneficial for you because you can run an ad just within your district, you know, within a 20 mile radius and run ads specifically to those people who want to, you know, learn from you or work with you or experience your products. So digital billboard advertising for SEO marketing research is majorly looking at the picture of how do you show up online? What kind of colors do you use? What kind of fonts do you use? What kind of messaging do you use? Or how do you position yourself so that when people are reading your message, it makes sense? And then how do they feel when they read your message? Like they can see a beautiful picture and they might just want them, they might just be like, oh, that's a nice picture. I want to click on it. But if that picture wasn't there, that click will not happen. So it's just a way of getting people to know where the product is. Apple is a great example of it. How they talk about privacy and you'll see the phone, you won't see the person's face, but you'll see the full iPhone without saying Apple. So it's those little symbols because people can remember those things. So it's like subliminal ways of advertising. And that way you can connect. If you have a church, you can say, hey, you know, exit this or, you know, I've seen some churches do that, you know, so it's really a good way to build that out as well, you know, so just creating those intentional practices allows you to know who they are. And then what really gives you the icing on the cake is the QR codes, because when people are checking you online, yeah, they can type your website, they can, you know, they can type it in, or they can just remember, take a photo on their way. And then if they're driving back, they can take it again. But the goal here is if they can't scan it from their phone with because they're in their car and the screen is like all the way up in the road they may not be able to do that but they might do it when they stop at the gas station they might do it when they stop at the train station or when they go to you know a medical center or when they go to the mall so those are the ways to do it and i've been able to see across how you can actually connect with people in every country in the world um, this platform that I'm able to use that connects with everyone in the world. And then if you know where your audiences are, it's great. Like if you have a podcast, it's, that's perfect because you can tell people, hey, listen to my podcast, you know, and they'll know what it is because they're aware of it because you've been doing research and they're aware of what you produce. Or if they're not aware, at least you're aware of the market that is producing what you provide. So it's a good way of just, you know, blending those two together. That's awesome. I love that. Yes, yes, yes. So this is this is definitely good. Black Sea, you said you'd be using Blip. Yeah, Blip is good. Blip billboards 
are good. Have you seen success with Blip? The <clears throat> what I did was I wanted to to test it out. I wanted to make sure that I you know that I actually saw it go up and saw it for myself. So when I was learning everything as far as the timing, you know, the the time chart, the time of day, you know, and it was because again, just like any ads that you do, they're gonna they can tell you how many people it reached, but it's not going to give you the direct um, you know, it's not gonna give you that that, oh yeah, great, it did what it what I needed it to do, unless you're adding it with just like how you said, if you're doing social media ads and things like that. So those are things that I didn't do at the time that I'm I'm putting more forward now to make sure that I'm doing those things and that's why I'm making sure I pay attention when you're talking in these in these chats. Yeah, it's such an important thing to look out for. It just makes you more aware and you also want to be tech savvy, you know, because they can scan that code not knowing that they're actually going to enjoy the song or that that code is a QR code that will take them to your Instagram audio where the music is, you know, so they can stay in the app and recognize it. Oh, I like this song. Okay, I'll bookmark it. Then I'll go to Apple Music. Instead of telling them go to Apple Music to listen to the song, they may not have three minutes to just hit play, but they may have... 15 seconds to go on Instagram and see what other people are doing with your song. So it's just a way of alerting people and letting them know, hey, this works. Because big brands, corporate brands, they still use billboards. Yeah, we have social media, but they have a budget for billboards. So I think if we use that as a tool just for awareness, not for conversion, but for awareness, then the conversion will come when people actually now go online to look for us. And if we're already positioned well enough, then it shouldn't be a problem for them to find us, you know, at a faster rate. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Any questions for me, America Supermom, Black, Anant? That was good. I, I enjoyed it. I'm going to listen to the replay. Um, the main thing that I was picking up on was the international, Um, you know, how to, how to get into that realm of things and, Sometimes even, you know, being independent because I have, I have my own record label. Um, so that's why I want to make sure that I learn these things that are components of the label in order to make sure that I either have access and resources with connections that I've made with, you know, third party companies or find someone or at least have the knowledge where if I bring somebody into the, you know, into the, into the label, I know what they're also doing and I can understand it and be able to, you know, navigate that as well and not just be on the side looking for answers or having a whole bunch of questions right exactly you know because the moment you start like just showing up imagine 365 you're just on one billboard or a couple of them consistently at some point they're going to be like who is this person or what does this person do and that's how they start getting to recognize you you know it's just marketing and the advertising piece comes from there and there's an article that blip did um, blip billboards did which i i really like what they talked about because i've used them too as well and i use it for a client back in 20 2017 2018 around that time and it was it was doing really well so and it was for like a membership like a mastermind and we're able to get people through there so i'm looking at the billboards and what i'm seeing Traditional billboards, just to take us back a little bit, because we're going to do this really quick, just to give you some context. With traditional billboards, they started as far back as the 1830s, right? We're about to hit 2030 very soon, right? Like in a couple of years. But if we're looking at 1830, then 1930, and then 2030, that's uh, that's a good number of years, right? That's close to what, 200 years, you know, of just static advertising. And they've been doing that for years. This was like, I think, I don't know, I'm sure this came before email marketing. Like, you know, just look, think about back, 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 back then. And, you know, how did it work then? They said, well, essentially you purchase or rent advertising space on an outdoor sign. And this is usually contracted for a certain amount of time ranging from a few weeks to a few months. They didn't say few days because sometimes when we think about running ads, we don't think about running ads on a month to month cycle. Like if we're in September now 
and we're running ads like Apple, for example, are going to start running ads very soon. I'm sure they're already prepping themselves for, for that. We're, we already know it's coming, right? So we know we're going to see an Apple ad. We're going to see Apple talk. We're going to see Apple news. It's just going to happen. We know that every year. So if you're going to be smart about marketing, what can you do in your business to complement what people are talking about? So you can talk about the, the new iPhone and you can incorporate that into your music and say, hey, listen to my music on the latest iPhone, listen to my music on this. So you have to think about business strategic moves that still apply to the consumer demand of the population that you're attracting your content, your market to. And then when you have those creatives, it's more cost effective over time. So when people are spending money, you're able to really know what your purchasing power is. Because when people are purchasing billboard advertising for media owners, you can expect to pay anywhere between from what I'm seeing here, 750 to 15 K a month. Welcome Dr. Fashion. So imagine you're spending anywhere from 750 to 15 grand a month on, on billboards. Now you will be wondering why am I spending money on billboards, right? Are they going to do anything for me? They will do something for you. If you have the right audience looking for it, that's, that's the reality. Because when people are going to find those digital billboards, they're instant bulletins, right? They're instant information pieces. And the advertisement goes up for about eight to seven, eight to 10 seconds, seven to 10 seconds. So imagine somebody's staring at you. They're, think about it. If somebody's driving and they read, they, they have only three seconds to look up, see what you have to say, and then keep driving, they're not going to read your ad for 10 seconds while driving that's not going to happen so imagine everybody using those 10 seconds and then ju jumping them into like two second jumps so two seconds two seconds two seconds two seconds that's five cycles so when you have those five cycles and you're spending money on those cycles between let's say 5 a.m and 9 a.m and then you spend it again from 5 p.m to 9 p.m then you can really use those positions to know how to run ads meet the right target because you know, okay, I'm targeting business owners. I'm targeting family members. I'm targeting, you know, people who are, you know, business oriented, you know, people who are living in these connections, they may want to go buy, you know, coffee before they go to work and they might want to go to BlackRock or go to Starbucks. So uh, where's the closest ad I can place this before. So it gets very specific. You start using, you know, longitudes, latitudes, you start using, you know, these algorithm scores to find out exactly where they are. And then when you do run the ad, it's beautiful because now I can run an ad in the Atlanta airport at terminal, I think it's terminal um, B. Yeah, I think it's terminal B. There's a platform that allows you to run ads. You know, those when you're walking, you see those digital billboards, you know, they look like really nice and square formatted. Yeah, some of them are digital. So if you place yourself there and you think about the number of people going through there every day and you're scanning, Listen to my podcast, listen to my show, subscribe to my channel. You know, it's not buy this product now because they don't know you. So that point is brand awareness. It's like, okay, we don't know you, but we want to know you. We want to learn about you. Then you start creating those connection points. And then eventually if they really like you, then it gets better. If they don't, at least you'll know from the jump. So it's a good way to see that too. And then you can also look at heat map of food traffic. We can look at the live road traffic views. We can look at so many details just to make sure that we have the right things in place. So it's fun. It's really fun, but you also got to know what you're doing too. So that's something I wanted to, you know, bring up to you as well. Welcome Chiama. Welcome to Rome. Dr. Fashion, what's going down? How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm awesome. That's what's up. This is a really great topic. I'm just listening in. Thank you. Thank you. I was actually telling um, America Supermom, um, Black Sea and uh, Soda before she, she left that I'm planning to do SEO weekly workshops so that at least I can pick a day of the week and teach people how to do these things because I've realized on Clubhouse, it's great to be here and learn and listen, but I also want you to visually know what's going on so that when you now log in and you actually have a copy, then you can actually come back to the room and, with an understanding. If I give you a map, 
you know, you can read the map. If I tell you what the map is and you can't see it, then that, that map is useless because I can't really understand it. So that's why I think about, you know, making sure that if I'm going to teach you about something, I'll do it easily. Like set up your search console. Here's how to do it. Here's how to set up a heat map. Here's how you do it. So I'll tell you how to do these things because they're free. So why am I going to gatekeep or put something, you know, to charge you for that? The platform that built it, built it for free. So I'll tell you for free too, but the strategy is something that you'd have to pay for. That's the difference. So those are some things that we have to look into. So have you thought about digital ads or digital billboards before? You've been on a billboard, by the way. So yeah, you should you should be talking about that. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, the billboard, you guys can see it on my Instagram account. YouTube put me on sale, several billboards by the um, SoFi Stadium and the YouTube theaters in LA. And um, it was pretty cool, you know, to, you know, cause I've been out of high school for years. So to have my high school friends, you know, drive around the city and they say, oh my gosh, I saw you on the billboard. That was pretty cool. But it was also a reminder for them to check out my YouTube channel. Cause I have been doing YouTube since I was a kid. And a lot of them haven't um, checked out my profile in a minute. So I have, you know, things have changed since I started my channel. So. It was some great advertising there. Um, and I probably gained a few followers, but for the most part, I'm really big on SEO for like Google and then people just finding me naturally on the YouTube platform. So that was shown in my analytics. And Favor has a call y'all, so he'll be back. <laughs> And welcome if you're just joining us. And hey, Linda, Stephen Black. Welcome back, Favor. Thank you, thank you, sorry. <laughs> my, cousin, my cousin is in town. I didn't even know, she. she's like, I haven't seen her in like almost a decade. So my auntie called me from San Diego and she's like, yo, your cousin's here. I was like, what? So I called her and she's like not too far from me. So I'm gonna see her later on today before she flies back out but I got the call, so that's why I got interrupted. So I, I heard what you were saying until the last few sentences, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I was just saying like the billboard was a reminder for people who was there when I first started YouTube to check out the channel again, cause now it started off as fashion DIYs, but now I have integrated the science element into it, which is very different, so yeah. That's dope. Yeah, the science to it is so important. Like even like imagery, how do people read from left to right? How what's the font size? Like it's all those things that you know matter. Because like if somebody doesn't know you, then they see you on YouTube. They're like, okay, let's check you out because they are regular on YouTube. And then from YouTube, they find your website, they find your merch, they find your books, they find your lifestyle. They just find everything after just one access point. So it just takes that one. Sometimes we were trying to tell them, do check me out on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Facebook. We can't do that. Just say, go to my website or just go to the one platform that you know that is going to open up a portal to other things. Then it just makes it easier for people to connect. So that's a good one. Thank you so much for that insight. Chioma, welcome to Room. Good afternoon. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Have you thought about advertising with billboards? Have you seen it? When you see it, do you like what you see? Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 Faber. Um, thank you so much for this room. Um, hello to everybody that's in the room. Um, I actually have, um, I have a friend who does it quite often. Um, and she collaborates with different um, influencers and preachers and stuff like that um, to do billboard advertising. So I definitely did. She actually has one coming up, a collaboration coming up um, that I was considering joining. Um, but I think it's, it's awesome. Um, and, um, like Dr. Fashion was saying, um, even if, um, the people are not connected to you, or maybe if they were already connected to you, them seeing your face again, would remind them to kind of revisit the work, um, that you do. Um, so with billboards, I think it's, you know, that reminder, um, exposing you to a new audience, but also reminding, um, the people that are already connected to you that, Hey, I'm still here. And, um, you might want to check out some updates. So, um, yeah, I definitely did think about it and I'm still thinking about it because she has an upcoming collaboration. So, so yeah, looking forward. 
That's what's up. Yeah, it's so good to see billboards and it just makes it official. You know, like when someone is coming to town or something's happening, a big event, and you see it, you're like, wow, this is actually happening. It's on the street. Like, it just makes you feel, not that you're not important, but it just adds more color. And it just adds that, you know, that touch to it. So they're like, oh, wow, you can actually drive and see this. It gives that sparkle. So I think it's just thinking about the branding as opposed to the conversion. Because the conversion will happen if they like you. If they don't, then they'll drive away. But if they do, they'll stay. So that's how to really, you know, look about those things. And I'll give you some insights on what I'm seeing. Just for me, like in Houston, the number of billboards I'm seeing that I could actually access. And I'll tap into that a little bit soon. So thank you so much for that insight. Steven, welcome to the room. Any question, contribution? The floor is yours. What's going on, guys? Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, all right. Thank you for the space. I usually come in your room all the time, just soaking up the knowledge and showing respect. And I learned a lot. But this time, it was on a topic that I'm kind of familiar with because I do own a boutique, social media marketing, and I do offer digital billboards. So I'm just pretty much here to kind of like maybe share a um, few knowledge about it. The, after you said, you're not gonna get gatekeep information and it's it's free. Why not just I was like, you know what, why not just start coming on stage now and just be more open and speak? So thanks for that. But yeah, so I would say digital billboard for me and my clients, I've seen um, them do wonders for them. So the way we use it, based on where Instagram is tell us most of your clients are, um, that's where we're trying to want billboards to kinda of like get that extra touch because you know in marketing it says somebody gonna have to see you at least seven times to make a move so we use it just like coca-cola would have a shirt in h&m with just their name and their red and you kind of get familiar with that so we kind of use it i recommend them to use it in a sense like that to kind of like still embed their brain and their mind so that way when they're making their decision the first thing that come on their mind is your company or your brain so yeah i like it I love that. Yeah, it definitely has a, a spin on it. You know, how you connect with people, where they are, what they're doing. And then you're able to also see like what streets, you know, where are people connecting? Like for me, as I'm speaking to you right now, I was just doing some research because here in Houston, um, I'm looking at this platform. Yeah, there's 68, there's 68 uh, digital billboards. 68. So if you guys want to get on a call with me and learn about this before the workshop and, and get this set up, and if you want us to work with you and get this all together, please click the link above and schedule a call and I can show you this, but also it would be have, it would have to happen after something. We have to go to the audit and everything, and then I'll tell you if that's something you're interested in, then we'll, you know, paint that picture and I'll give you like the full result. So Houston has 68 board results. Airports, I'm looking at it right now. Airports, grocery stores, uh, and what else is there? Um, grocery stores. Yeah, they're mostly grocery stores. And now within these grocery stores, it also gives me, you know, like when you think about traffic, traffic has red lights, amber, and green. So like, you know, stop, go, and then wait. So with this platform, you can get to know like the activity like for me i wouldn't run an ad by the airport where it says jade aviation because even though it's six cents per play for 10 seconds the last time people heard from them was five months ago so i wouldn't spend money there but i would spend money in this new place i'm seeing wow it's a grocery store by walmart and the last person that they, they have high availability right now and that's 26 minutes ago. Today is a holiday. So people are out there, like I'm also gonna go to Walmart. I need to get some stuff too, right? I was like, should I go to Walmart, Burlington? Should I go to Target? I was like, nah, let me just go to Walmart because everything is there and I'll just check it out and see. If it's not there, then I'll go where I wanted to go, but there's an option. So me looking at this grocery store, it says in the last 27 minutes, it's highly available. So I click on the street and then it shows me the exact street I'm on. And then I can actually see the billboard, right? I can see the billboard. I can see exactly where, you know, people are, 
you know, they're driving to. I'm like, okay, I can see there's a dry cleaner spot. There's a place for nails. There's a place for alterations. There's a place for, it's like a mall around there. So I know, okay, people are driving here. So if I'm, if I know people are driving in this availability, it takes about 300 seconds. Average cost per 300 seconds is about seven cents. So I know that if this is seven cents, then I know that if this is a grocery store, then people are probably hungry or they are going to eat or they are on their way somewhere. And then I can see the highest, you know, it gives me like the days of the week. So I know, okay, Friday is usually like the busiest day of the week. So I know when I'm going to spend, it tells me that the pattern is from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's when I should be running ads in this location. So just by looking at this alone, I know, okay, I'm going to run ads here, here, here. I know exactly where they're going to be. And that allows me to also know, like give an idea of where this image, where this billboard looks like. So if I know this billboard is going to show up at this location, then I know for sure that even if it's not on the road and it's literally like in the, cause it's telling me locksmith. So people who are going to like check their keys, there's a section that has like a little block that allows me to run a video ad, an MP4 a JPEG for about 300 seconds maximum. So, and it says supports audio. No, so it's no, no audio. It's just visual. So if you're, if you have a music video, if you have a, you know, video with captions on, that's going to, going to help. So these are some things I'm able to notice that gives me this, you know, it gives me an, an audience. It says an average hourly audience is about 680 people. So 680 people between 5 AM and okay. It doesn't say 8 PM. It's actually 10 PM. So between. 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. is what about 15 hours and they're about 680 people per hour right so if it's per hour that's about 10,000 people 10,000 people 10,000 people per day and i'm running this ad for 30 days that's about 306,000 people that I would never have met if I wasn't at that position. Advertising got one thing and I'm spending seven cents per play within a 300 second timeline. So instead of me spending all 300 seconds, I can only spend maybe 10 seconds. So I know, okay, if it's seven seconds, uh, seven cents, I'll do seven seconds. So each frame is a second. You know how they say frames per second? So each second counts. So from the first to the seventh second, if you can run ads, give them the color, get the message out there, they're reading it, they can look at it, there's a code they can scan. Maybe the last four seconds would be, you know, scan this code, it can look like a GIF, you know, to say this and then to flip the image back again, flip the image, make it interactive. I'm just giving you a random ideas, but I would do it in a creative way so that when you can actually see the results of your business actually getting information and people can connect with you. If it's a local store, you know, like Steven was saying, people will get to see you if you sell cake next door, if you sell groceries, if you sell, you know, apples, if you sell, you know, whatever it is, those things will show up there and the right people will connect with you because if they're going to this area, it helps. Like for me, I can see All right, so I got a zip code. Yeah, this is in Houston. So it tells me in Houston, in this area, yeah, there are 36,000 people that live here and the average home value is 84.8K a year. So if I'm gonna run ads to this location in this by this grocery store, then I know that if this is the number of people who are gonna be there per day, then that allows me to also be very specific on how I advertise and what I'm actually saying. So just by following these little like tips, instructions and pointers, you'll end up finding that it's, it's not hard to find your audience because you're, you're spending $350 to let's say $750 a, a month. So that's technically about $10 to $25 a day. And within a whole month, You've, got, you've come to understand who they are, what they're doing. Your next two months that you're running advertisements is so specific that you've made back that money 
on a week to week basis from your first month to your third month, because you're actually advertising to people. If it's your book, if it's your podcast, if it's something that actually has monetary value, it makes sense. I wouldn't want you running an ad that's not going to give you a monetary gain because that's just a waste. Right. Unless you're just doing it for charity sake or just doing it because you you care about people or just say, hey, happy holidays. Great. That's totally fine. You know, we love the people. But if you want to do it and also impact while doing the same thing at a larger capacity, then you're able to use QR codes, scanned codes, sending emails, getting responses and then letting people know it's there, like being very vocal about it. Don't just run an ad and just run it for that sake yeah black thank you for being here appreciate you would like to say anything before you go yes i would i'd, I'd love to connect with my uh, with a lot of you flav babe we're going to be talking i want to definitely link with you i'm going to set up a meeting um i appreciate everybody's feedback your professionalism you all this is an inspiring room right here for anybody that's really learning to do things on their own or learning to at least learn more about it to, to work with other companies. So I appreciate you and everyone. Please have a blessed week and a good holiday. Thank you so much, you too, Black. Enjoy your holiday too and stay safe out there. So yeah, guys, this is how it works. This is how digital billboards work. I will do a, a definitely I'll do a workshop so you can see what I'm seeing. I'll show you how I set it up and I'll do a, an actual live one so that you can see it. And then maybe after like 30 days, I'll come back and do another follow up uh, workshop that would just help you come and see it. And we'll, we'll find some ways to go about it so that you can actually follow through and get it like a class. So like you can go through a set of classes and each class is going to teach you something. So I've been really thinking about it especially for the holiday season, how can I show up, not just here on Clubhouse online, but also showing up so that you can actually show up online with me and we can be on Zoom together. I did it before as a workshop. It was so successful and, you know, I want to do more of them. I just don't want to do it once just like that. I want to make it consistent as well. Chum, I wanted to ask you, what did you think about the, because you were there at the workshop, what was, what are the things that you cut out the most that's different from like Clubhouse experience? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Can you guys hear me? Okay. So, um, one of the things was that, um, of course, like on Zoom, you're able to actually like see um, how the the tools that you're introducing us to work. Um, so like those step-by-step -step instructions and um, being able to see it visual because I like I'm a visual learner so being able to like see it done um, and see how to you know how to do certain things visually really uh, helps I know for me it does um, and just the time that you took to like answer people's questions and you know not only answer them but also like work individually um with us to kind of show us some of the questions that we had um and how to get the outcomes and results that we wanted um i think that's really what, what separated um you know the the workshop the master class from um us just being here on facebook i mean not facebook sorry clubhouse um so i mean clubhouse is, is great but it's very limited you know because it, it is social audio at the end of the day so um you know those step by step is it's like you know somebody can tell you favorite can tell you okay go here do this do that but being able to like see him work it um you know live on video is just it's a totally different feel um and also being able to connect with other people um because some of the people inside of the workshop was actually a asking questions that i wanted to ask but I wound up getting the answer just because I was there and I was able to like see, you know, it demonstrated and done. So um, that's what I most enjoyed. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I didn't even hear that feedback. That's so great for me to take in because I can now, you know, help out and do more, especially like with questions, having in a way whereby like when you come in, you know, leave your questions when you come in and that will help us like get that started and answering those questions. You just gave me a good idea on that. So thank you for that because I'm always giving you great ideas. <laughs> yes, you already know because it's very, very exciting to hear them and then act on them, do them well, and then people can benefit because it's for the people. It's not just for us alone. So 
yeah, I will definitely, you know, look into this and let more people learn how to do it. You know, how much can they spend, you know, the titles, you know, where they're connecting and all those things. It's very, very important. Every second counts. And if you can attract people and connect with them, you can only imagine like how much you can grow. Think about like the number of followers you can grow over in like a short time, just if you're able to connect with those people. So that's, that's good. So thank you for that insight and that feedback. America Supermom, I appreciate you, Dr. Fashion, Choma, Steven, Chris, Keisha, and Pete. You're all appreciated. I know it's a holiday, so I want to give you all back your day and enjoy your holiday. And I'm going to see you all tomorrow bright and early. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we will see you here tomorrow. I'll be here tomorrow. Probably it's like, maybe like, I don't know, maybe 8 a.m., central but it's gonna be a little early so i either do that or maybe do it somewhere in the afternoon of the day so i'll see i might do half and half but depending on how the schedule flows but i really appreciate y'all <laughs> so you're welcome steven y'all are laughing appreciate you all god bless you have a wonderful time and enjoy yourselves take care